Welcome everyone, I'm Jake from the engineering team at Appright. Today I'm excited to present the latest version of Appright 1.2, which features a brand new GraphQL API that can be used alongside or instead of the existing REST or real-time APIs. For those of you who haven't heard, AppRite is an end-to-end -end backend service that allows you to quickly and easily create web, mobile, and backend applications. If you haven't heard of GraphQL, it's a query language for APIs that allows clients to request specific data in a flexible and efficient manner. This means you can now access all of the features and functionality of AppRite through a single API endpoint. As well as the new API, we've also included a sleek GraphQL Explorer, SDK support for GraphQL, and documentation updates to help you quickly get started. As I touched on, GraphQL is a really powerful technology that allows you to easily and efficiently access data from an API. It eliminates the need for multiple round trips to the server and can reduce the amount of data transferred, resulting in faster and more efficient applications. The AppRite GraphQL API offers full support for all of AppRite services. This means you can manage your auth, databases, functions, storage, and more, all via GraphQL queries and mutations. The GraphQL API is exposed on the route slash v1 slash GraphQL with both the get and the post methods. All queries and mutations should be sent to this route following the GraphQL HTTP request model. Let's take a look at how you could create an account and a session in a single request using curl. So first of all, we need to add some options to the command. The first of which is dump header. So this will just let us see the response headers once we execute the request. Next we need to add some headers to the request. The first of which is just setting the content type to JSON. The second one is setting the AppRite project that we want to target with this request. Next we specify we want to use the post request method and target the GraphQL endpoint of the API. Now we need to specify the data that we want to send with the request. In this case, it's a JSON object where we specify the query key with the value of the mutation we want to execute. We pass in both the account create and the account create email session queries with all of their arguments, as well as the fields we want to select from each. Once we execute this request, we can see we get back the cookies in the headers and we get back a data object with the results for each query that we executed containing only the specific fields that we requested. Using curl in the terminal to test your queries is complex and error prone. We wanted to make your experience as easy and pleasant as possible. To that end, AppRite 1.2 includes another new feature the GraphQL Explorer. The GraphQL Explorer is a powerful tool for working with the new API. Based on the Altair GraphQL client, it has a user-friendly interface that makes it easy to work with GraphQL, even for those new to the technology. It supports all the features of GraphQL, including query variables, file uploads, and custom headers, making it a very versatile tool. As well as that, there are some extra features that make it even easier and more enjoyable to use, including searchable documentation, one-click query generation from the documentation, autocomplete, and even error highlighting. Coming back to our create account and session example we ran in the terminal before, let's see how we could do that with the explorer. So first of all, we need to make sure that the project header is set. We don't need to worry about the content type header as that's handled already by the explorer. Next, we can see that we are already setting the post request method and targeting the GraphQL endpoint. Now we just need to add the query body. 
So once we add that, you can see that it's the same as we ran in the terminal, but it's much easier to read formatted like this. Once we execute the request, you'll see we also get the same result over here, but in a much easier to digest way. Another benefit of using the Explorer is that session cookies are handled for us automatically, meaning we don't have to add the cookie headers manually. The AppRite SDKs have all been updated to support the new GraphQL API by including a new service of their own. This service can be used to interact with the API in the same way as all the other services, making it feel right at home with the rest of your app code. Let's take a look at how we could use it with the web SDK. First of all, we need to instantiate our AppRite client and set the endpoint and the project. Next, we instantiate the GraphQL service, passing in the client as a parameter. And that's what we need to do for the setup. Now we're ready to make some queries and mutations. Coming back to our create account and session example from earlier, let's see how that would look in the web SDK. So here you can see the query is exactly the same, but now we're able to make it from a web app context. One problem with this query is that we have hard coded the variable values. This means we're not going to be able to reuse it across requests. To deal with that, we can use a feature of GraphQL called query variables. This way, we define parameters that the mutation will take and we pass them in, in a variables object instead of hard coding them inline. It's worth noting that AppRite is agnostic when it comes to a GraphQL client. It means if you're more comfortable with something like Apollo, Relay, or URQL, you're free to use them instead of the AppRite SDKs. To make sure AppRite stays as easy to use as possible as new services are added, we've given the documentation a makeover. There are now dedicated quick start guides for REST, GraphQL, and Realtime, making it easier to get started with any of the available APIs. The GraphQL guide gives you a detailed overview of how to work with the API. You can see how to make requests, the types of requests you can make, and what responses to those requests will look like. As we get further in, we dive into some of the details around how authentication is working, some of the key differences between the GraphQL and REST APIs, and we finish up with some SDK examples. To complement this, there are now examples for REST and GraphQL queries for all services, so it's easy to see how to use AppRite even if you're communicating directly over HTTP instead of via one of the many SDKs. That concludes the tour of AppRite 1.2. We hope you're as excited as we are to get started with GraphQL and AppRite. We'd love to hear any thoughts and feedback you have, so feel free to drop a comment or catch up with us on Discord or GitHub. Thanks for watching.